First of all, welcome to uh, EBM TV. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's my great uh, pleasure to uh, have you here. Uh, as we discussed, uh, we shared several things. Yes, uh, yes. One of them we had a uh, long one on the yeah. line. Yeah. The other thing is actually the book Atlas Shrug that also changed my view of the world. So I really love this book. Actually, Good. Good. Uh, I plan to introduce your book as well as this book uh, and this TV. Good, good. good. Yeah. So that's good. So what we are sharing. Yes, <laughs> that's what sure changed my life. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the what is happening in Korea is very similar to what this uh, Atlas uh, described in the book. Yeah. Yeah, in the, book. Yeah. the current government, Moon government, actually encourage the looters mm -hmm. uh, take most of the, the fruit from innovators yep. um, and, and actually increasing exploitation um, between labor, uh, workers mm -hmm. and also workers from the innovators. Yep. Uh, it's very sad that, that this government is uh, really focusing on uh, inequalities. Uh, could you uh, explain why that, does it, that actually is not the right things as you described in your book? Absolutely. I mean, I, inequality from an economics perspective and from an ethical perspective is irrelevant. All right. It's just not important. Uh, what's important is freedom. And when you take people and you make them free, and you protect them so that they can't steal from one another and they can't use fraud against one another, then what you get is inequality because we don't produce at the same level. Mm -hmm. We don't have the same ideas. There's only one Steve Jobs. There's only one Bill Gates. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I mean, I wish there were more of them. And, but these are, are, are productive geniuses who create enormous amounts of wealth for all of us. Mm -hmm. And they take a tiny share of what they produce for the world. But that tiny share is so large that income inequality increases, but we were all better off. All of us, our lives are better for having had Steve Jobs and Bill Gates, or I like to use um, J.K. Rawlins, the woman who wrote uh, Harry Potter, because yeah. everybody knows Harry Potter, and everybody's read Harry Potter. And I say, J.K. Rawlins is really, really bad, because she increased income inequality. It's terrible. I got poorer because I bought the books. And she got richer. She became a billionaire. She's a billionaire today. That's wrong, because I'm poor now. And people scratch their heads, because right? that doesn't seem right. No, we're all richer, because we read Harry Potter, and we got the spiritual benefit of reading the books. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy that J.K. Rawlins is a billionaire, because it rewarded her for making our lives better. And that's true of all innovators and entrepreneurs and creators and builders. The world, the, the view of, of the current Korean government, and I think the view of so many people in the world today, is that trade and innovation and production and economics is a zero-sum world. That your gain is my loss. But no, in a free market, your gain is my gain. If you make money, it's because my life is better, because I bought your product. I'm not going to buy your product unless your product makes my life better. So we need to change our paradigm. Economics is win-win. Trade is win-win. It's mutually beneficial. We don't win at the same rate because we don't produce the same value. Some, you know, uh, some of us are teachers. <laughs> and as teachers, we're never going to make a lot of money. Because we only teach. We teach a few hundred kids every year. So over a lifetime, we might influence a few thousand people. A Bill Gates or Steve Jobs influenced billions of people. They like changed the lives of billions of people. So they make more money than us. Okay, I don't care. Actually, I'm happy. I, I, I would thank Bill Gates if I met him or Steve Jobs when I met him because, again, they made my life better. So the whole obsession about zero sum, about uh, inequality, is, is an obsession driven by zero sum mentality. One person's gain is another person's loss. And from an ethical perspective, it's driven by envy. Why does he have more than I do? Right. Instead of respect for somebody who has more than I do. Yeah, the, I, I also argued the same logic to Korean public. Uh, recently, the many economists or the, the official 
uh, officers in the Korean government uh, claim that the top 1% or 10% share has been increasing so much. It's just like in the United yeah. States. Yeah. So I, 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 I argue that no, no, because of that, many Korean uh, companies become so globally successful, like Samsung Electronics. Yes. So, of course, because they globally says their global success you know, brought lots of wealth, yes. and then uh, they take a small portion of that, that's the Shukatarian yeah. innovation pool of reward, right? So, if in the past mm -hmm. they just made the lives of Koreans better, right. they made X. Mm -hmm. Now they're making the lives of people all over the world better. So the X is multiplied, it's bigger. Exactly. A good example of that uh, from the United States is athletes, basketball players. Mm -hmm. Basketball players make a lot more money today than they did 20, 30 years ago. And you know, why is that? It's because today basketball is a global industry. People in China, people in Korea, people in Europe watch American basketball. So LeBron James is not only entertaining Americans, he's entertaining the entire world. So his, so of course, the entire world is, is paying, right, through advertising to the owners of the teams. And LeBron James is making more money because his market now is global rather than national. And the same thing of these multinational companies. They are now having an impact globally instead of just nationally. And as a consequence of that, their income has gone up dramatically, whereas the worker in the factory is still only in a sense, doing the same job, right? He might be more productive and wages at the bottom have gone up. It's not true that they are stagnant, they've gone up. They've just gone up more slowly because the increase in productivity has not matched the, global, the kind of effect of globalization. Yeah, I, I also uh, take this example, for example, BTS, have you heard that? No, no. That, that's uh, uh, the group of boys uh, so, uh, Famous now. Like, oh, the musicians, the singers. Musicians. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and we call yeah. idol groups. Yes. And now they, they are performing yeah. in uh, Britain and yeah. America yeah. and taking yeah. the, I could, uh, clearly they are accumulating so much money. Yeah. So why that? That way it's hurt me. That's, that's a ridiculous one. And uh, as you described, when you decided to move to the United States, you never uh, considered the inequality, right? And many defectors from North Korea uh, to <laughs> to South, uh, they never could uh, actually care about the inequality. They really came here uh, for the economic opportunities, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, and I I often uh, amazed by the fact that actually the North Korea and South Korea is a good example really economic opportunity matters and uh, economic freedom matters. Yes. Inequality yes. is a natural uh, result of that freedom, right? So, but still people think, or even the current government yeah. think that uh, inequality is, is unfair and another justice and, and so on. So, well, unfortunately, it, it comes from a philosophy, a philosophical approach, like so, and ethics, mm -hmm. that says equality is some kind of ideal. Right. That we, 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 you know, but, but we are metaphysically different human beings. Mm -hmm. We have different interests, different characters, different uh, motivations. And we're going to produce at different levels. Um, and and to, to assume that we're all the same goes counter to reality, counter to nature. And the only way we become equal is in North Korea. The only way we become equal is if we're all equally poor. Yes. Right? And, and North Korea, I mean, people think of North Korea as this aberration. But the fact is that 300 years ago, the whole world was North Korea. Right. Everybody was poor until capitalism until we had free markets. And once you had capitalism and free markets, suddenly everybody got rich relative to the way things were. Just some people got rich faster than other people, but everybody was better off. And I would argue that the only reason the poor, the people who landed up poor got much, much richer is because the rich got even richer. Because the fact is that nobody gets rich. Nobody's life improves unless you have entrepreneurs, right? unless you have innovation unless you have businessmen, unless you have capital investments. Capitalists and entrepreneurs and CEOs, managers of big companies, 
they produce the most. They create the standard of living we live in. We should be saying thank you to them, not denouncing them, because they make it possible for all of us to rise. The reason wages have gone up over the last 50 years in Korea, because you used to be poorer than North Korea. Yeah. The reason those wages have gone up is because of the increased productivity of labor. Labor has increased productivity because capital has been invested in that labor. Labor doesn't become more productive just by itself. You have to invest capital. And that is entrepreneurs, that's capitalists, that's financial markets, that's the, all the features of a free market. Yeah, uh, along your uh, logic, actually, it was uh, another uh, awakening moment when I read the uh, economist so well. So, yeah. Uh, uh, Thomas Sowell. Yeah, Thomas Sowell. Yeah. He said that what is amazing is not the why the people are poor, actually, how many, why so many people suddenly are so, so, so rich, right? Yeah, yeah. so, <laughs> no, so that, that's the, it is a, 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 No, the natural state of mankind, Yeah. the state of mankind before capitalism, before the Industrial Revolution, before the age of reason, but, you know, before capital is invested, is poverty. For 100,000 years, mm -hmm. since the beginning of man, yeah. since the beginning of Homo sapiens, we were poor. And it's only in the last 200 years that anybody in the world has really been rich. How long have we had electricity? How long have we had running water and, 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 and actually, you know, uh, uh, sewage and, and all the conveniences that we enjoy? Like, or these phones, right? These phones have only been around for 11 years. I mean, we take them for granted as if they've been here forever. But somebody had to invent that. Somebody had to invest in it. Somebody had to take a risk on it. All that capital had to capital had to be smart enough to see that this was the future. Ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the people would have never invested in an iPhone. So it took a particular genius to do it, and now we want to punish them. We want to penalize them. We want to take their money away. Why? I mean, it's it's unbelievably unjust and unfair. I say equality is unjust. Equality is unfair. The only valid equality is equal, political equality, equality of freedom, equality of rights, equality before the law. But equality has no place in economics. Yeah, I, I fully agree that, uh, and unfortunately, this Korean government is yeah. trying very hard to, to punish these innovators nowadays. Uh, that's very sad. And I, I think the, if I follow your logic, uh, the, one of the really fatal assumption is the, that the group pie assumption, yes, so yes, the pie yes. assumption. It, because the Korean culture is so collective, yep. it, it's based on collectivism, yep. and, and that's it's also that assumption is much stronger than any other part of the world. That's, that's the, really uh, what we are struggling to explain the uh, importance of the freedom. Yeah, I think that's right. The real battle is over collectivism. Yeah. The real battle is not about economics. Because the economic issue we, we won a long time ago. Free markets work. The real battle is is trying to convince people that collectivism is bad. And and that only individualism can produce the kind of results that they want in their life. And only individualism is the appropriate way for human beings to live. Because yes, we assume that there is a collective pie out there. That wealth, Korean, there's such a thing as Korean wealth. But there is no Korean wealth. Right. There's the wealth you create and I create and somebody else creates and, and we create at different levels. But it, the wealth is only individual. Wealth is produced by individuals. And it, when we assume that wealth is collectivized, then people look and say, okay, there's this pie, there's this Korean wealth. How are we going to distribute it? No, that's a completely wrong way of looking at it. There's no pie. It's not a static pie. It's a, it, it, there's no static pie because wealth grows. But more importantly, there's no collective pie. You, you know, other people can't eat for me. I have to eat myself. Right. Other people can't think for me. And other people can't produce for me. So we understand at the biological level that we're individuals. Now we have to understand at the political moral level mm -hmm. that we're individuals. The fundamental unit in society is the individual. And if I produce stuff, you don't have a right to it. You can't steal it away from me. And what the government does is theft by taking from some and giving to others, that is that is theft. Uh, you know, it's it's taking what an individual produces. It's taking food off their table. Um, and it's not relevant how much you need or how much society decides you need. It's how much you as an individual produce. So yeah, I think the ultimate battle 
and this is the battle we've been fighting for hundreds of years, it's a deeply philosophical battle, is this battle between collectivism and individualism. As long as we think that the group is more important than the individual, we will always be willing to sacrifice the individual to the group. And what we need is to change our thinking and, and, and to, to embrace kind of the enlightenment, the European enlightenment idea that the individual is what's sacred. The individual is what matters. And the only reason to form a collective is to protect that individual. That's why we have governments in our we state. But the, the individual is the unit of morality. The individual is the unit that is that is uh, that matters. Not the group is just a collection of individuals. With that, that theft is called welfare nowadays, right? It's called what? The the theft uh, the, the theft welfare. is called welfare. Yeah, right. That's called welfare. The, yeah. the unfortunate yes. uh, uh, use of the word. Yeah. And he, you migrate from Israel. Yes. And uh, he, Israel is one of the most innovative countries actually producing lots of the unicorns. Yes. And, yes. Amazing number of startups, successful startups. Uh, on the other hand, uh, like uh, in Korea, the, the big business conglomerate always blame that they have uh, too much economic power. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. actually, I think it, uh, it's the only uh, uh, other country than Korea that actually government to try to reform uh, corporate governance. Uh, by law, uh, the, uh, what do you think that that that, that here uh, the Korean government? I think there's mu much larger portion of the economic develop uh, the difficulties actually uh, came uh, coming from the government failure, not, yes. not the market failure. Absolutely. Uh, but the people and those progressive uh, guys always blame the big corporate yes. in Korea, so yes. they become the public enemy in Korea. And even the one of the three economic uh, policy pillars of the current government actually you know dismantling mm -hmm. this uh, Congress. Yeah. So so I think Korea to the extent that the government in the past has protected the conglomerates mm -hmm. and given them special favors as compared to entrepreneurs, that's bad. Mm -hmm. So what we want is the government to be less involved in the economy, mm -hmm. to get out of the economy, not to break up the businesses, but to allow also mm -hmm. for competition, not to protect them, not to bail them out, mm -hmm. not to tell the banks they have to lend them money, but to actually allow for real competition. So the more the government gets out of the economy, the better it is. Israel is an interesting case because Israel, when I was growing up in Israel, Israel was a socialist country. The largest employer in Israel in, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, with the labor unions. Oh. The labor unions owned the means of production. It was real socialism. Oh, I see. But starting in the 1980s, that was broken up. The, the labor unions' power was reduced. They were forced to sell off uh, their factories. Everything was privatized. And I think that is a big reason why Israel has become so successful. I think the other reason why Israel has so many innovations and innovators is a cultural issue. We grew up in Israel. Um, we grew up on the, uh, with disagreement. The whole culture in Israel is you disagree. <laughs> you know, we fight, we argue. So dinner, dinner time at, at, a, at a typical uh, uh, you know house in, in in Israel is everybody's arguing, everybody's yelling at one another, right? Uh, and, and that's encouraged. The disagreement is encouraged. The thinking for yourself is encouraged. Independence is encouraged. And I think that produces an entrepreneurial mentality, right? I'm willing to take risk. I'm willing to argue. I'm willing to disagree because entrepreneurs are people who disagree, are people who think they can do things better yeah. than what's. So I think the culture contributes to that. But I would say the Israeli government today is still way too involved in the economy. And they are, they actually do provide some monopoly protections that they have protected certain industries. For example, some of the farming industries. Some of the agricultural industries in Israel are protected from competition. Part of the protection is with tariffs, so it's very expensive to import food into Israel, so that they can, you know, so like the milk lobby in Israel is very powerful, and they they, they have monopoly power over milk prices, whereas you could import milk cheaper, right, yeah, from some of our neighbors, and I think that's true of cement, that's true of a number of different things, but in the tech space. The government has very much left that market alone. So, so it functions, you have venture capital, you have entrepreneurs, 
and, and companies rise up without government permission, without government authority, without government you know, intervention. So that's why I think you have so much innovation there. But Israel too has the same kind of stuff because indeed, indeed I fear that much of the world is, 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 is very similar to the situation in Korea. I mean, we're seeing more government intervention, more government, Europe, more government controls, you know, more inequality is a big issue in the United States. I think it's partially, the fact that people talked about it is partially why Donald Trump got elected because he got elected by people who thought inequality is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And, and he was going to fix it by bringing manufacturing back to the United States, which is a complete myth and, and, and ridiculous. And of course, he is engaged in a trade war, not because it makes economic sense, because as economists, we know it doesn't make economic sense, but because he, like many people in the world today, view trade as a zero-sum game. And he thinks the United States wins when it puts on tariffs. Um, so the economic ignorance, I think, driven from the, co the collectivism, and driven from a morality that says we should all be equal is stunning in the world today. We should know so much better than we do. Yeah, it is. It's not the science, it's not the reasoning, it, it's the myth. Yes, and, yes. And also, uh, many politicians actually do such a, take such courses because it gives them, it gives them power. power. Yeah, so they encourage the mythology, they encourage the lie yeah. because it gives them more, more control. Uh, even the many scholars, uh, left winning scholars in Korea, actually spread such myths and fake news yeah. and sometimes yeah. uh, extremely distort the facts. So, what I, I have been doing is actually pointing out that. that their claims are not based on the facts Good. Uh, and, Good. and uh, business logic. So, so uh, uh, could you uh, uh, explain what your institute, uh, Ian Land Institute, are doing? Yeah, I mean, the Ayn Rand Institute is basically there to promote the ideas of Ayn Rand. Mm. It's, it's to, you know, she died in 1982 mm -hmm. and the institute was founded in 1985 to continue her legacy. It's to get people interested in her ideas, I think, her ideas are the most important ideas in the world today because not only do they deal with the political economic level, but they, they create the moral and philosophical foundation for freedom. And I think that's where the disagreements really are deep. Mm -hmm. It's in, and I think they, it's the fact that, that people believe in a false morality and believe in collectivism. Mm -hmm. It's why they are willing to accept these false, ridiculous ideas in economics. So we have to challenge that. And my view is Ayn Rand is the only thinker that can really challenge these fundamentally collectivistic ideas because she has a philosophical context. So our institute is there to promote these ideas, whether it's to get people, particularly young people, to read her books. Because mm -hmm. just like our lives were changed by Atlas Shrugged, it, it, you know, I'm hoping that millions of people's lives will be changed ultimately by Atlas Shrugged. And then to, to you know, use her ideas to comment on current events, to show people how applicable they are, how relevant they are to the current debate. Mm -hmm. And we also teach her philosophy so that we can train future intellectuals, so there will be future thinkers, future economists, future political scientists, future historians, who can use these ideas of individualism and reason and reality and, and, and rational self-interest to explain the world to, to the public and hopefully bring about real cultural change. Because I, I think politics is downstream from culture, mm -hmm. but culture is downstream from philosophy. Mm -hmm. What matters are the philosophical ideas people hold, that establishes a culture, mm -hmm. and the culture we get the politicians we deserve. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, it's sad, but Korea deserves the, these politicians, and Israel deserves its, and, <laughs> and we, I guess in the United States, we deserve Donald Trump, because we have a culture that fits their, their personality. So we have to change the culture, and this is why it's hard work. Mm -hmm. It's why these kind of videos are so important and the work you do is so important because you're trying to change the way people think about the world. You're challenging the status quo, you're, you know, and, and that has to be done if we're ever going to change the politics. Yeah, yeah my institute actually have been using a lot of material from FEE yes. and, and our yes. Heritage Foundation. Yes, and maybe Cato. Yeah, Cato yes. and uh, CAVEX from uh, Britain. Yes, yes. So. Uh, Please let me know the, what uh, what kind of uh, specific activities and material you have. Then we, we I love to good. I mean, I mean that idea. And your viewers could go to einrand.org, a y n r a n d.org, and of course I have a 
I have a podcast that I do three, four times a week uh, whenever I have an opportunity. Uh, and uh, I try to talk about these ideas and, and try to spread these ideas. So uh, just look up my name at Google and, and go YouTube and you can find, you can find my, my, my podcast. Uh, but, but yeah, we produce a lot of content, ha happy to share that content with you. And, uh, uh, and, and all those organizations are, produ are doing good work. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, that is all the economic layer. What we're trying to do is, 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 is present kind of the philosophical layer on which it all rests, which I think is what Rand's job is. And until we change people's attitudes towards morality, towards collectivism, towards their own life, in a sense, it's hard to do the economics. It's hard to convince them about the economics. Because as I said, we won the economic debate a long time ago. Yes, yes. You know, free markets work. And this, this country is the best thing yeah, yeah, exactly. against the North Korea, right? Yeah, yeah. There's no better yeah. example than, than South Korea. In 50 yeah. years, you went from being poorer than North Korea yeah. to being much, much, much richer than North Korea. Why? Yeah. Because Free markets, because you implemented some yeah. some pro market strategies, and not even all the way. Imagine how rich Korea would be if you really implemented free markets all the way. Right, you'd be even richer than you are today. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. So I open that this society is going to forget about this for little tigers. So the that now Hong Kong and Singapore is much much richer, yes. much richer than Korea because they stayed on track. Yeah, they 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 are much freer uh, yes. countries than yes. Although again, both of those countries are starting to head in the wrong direction. Hong Kong because of China's influence, China's influence. and Singapore because there's a, again like I think in a lot of countries. This issue of inequality has become a big issue, and the opposition in Singapore is becoming more powerful, and they're trying to influence the government to be, take on more leftist policies and more collectivistic policies. So even Singapore is now in danger of adopting anti-market policies, and I think that the whole world seems to be drifting in that direction. It's it's very disheartening, and it, and it means we need to do we need to work even harder to try to try to, to try to keep the freedoms that we have. Okay. Uh... I wish I could continue this discussion for all day, <laughs> yeah, but uh, you have to fun. catch the flight. I so do, I do. I, I have to, we have to conclude here for your flight. So thank you so much. My and, pleasure, uh, thank you. I'll do my best to spread the uh, uh, ideas, the philosophy, uh, and the materials that you used to uh, Wonderful. Anything we can do to help, we'd love to help. Yeah, also, if possible, I may send some of the young uh, people to your institute. We, we actually, a, a young Korean uh, from, from here just started as an intern at the institute on Monday. Oh, great. She just yeah. started uh, okay. a, a, a young woman. So, okay. so yes, we have essay contests that Korean students have participated in the past. She was a semi-finalist in one of our essay contests. Okay. Then she applied for an internship through the, the Coke uh, Institute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And she got the internship and she started now. So we're very, very excited to have her. And we'd love to have more in the future. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so Wonderful. much. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. My pleasure. Great.